today I thought it'd be fun to explain to you something you may have heard or a challenge you may have occasionally encountered when working with thick fabrics, heavy stitches, and edge stitching on a zigzag foot. So very often the standard foot you would get looks like that. And what you'll notice is there's a little indentation around the needle area. So that's the needle area there. It goes back and forth, side by side. But there's just that little indentation, and then it's flat. So what that means is that the feed dogs of the machine, for a zigzag machine, there's generally one on the outs each outside and then one in the middle, and on some machines there's one in the front as well. But when it's pushing heavy fabric, if you could imagine what's going to happen is the side feed dogs are going to be pushing away until the really thick fabric lands under this bit in the middle here and that's going to lift up the foot a bit which means the only feeding you're getting is from the middle which is sometimes why you get stuck so that's happened so there's there are, is something called uh, an embroidery foot um, which will have a bigger trough. So what you can imagine with this one is that the fabric will slide along the foot more and not lift it up so much. So that's quite good and that's for you know a, maybe a four or five millimeter wide zigzag but it's not super super big trough but that will give you better feeding. But there's a third foot which I've got here which you can see is very much wider so you can imagine if you're doing knits or quite very thick um, edges or a seam where you've got four layers of fabric and you're edge stitching or something like that or you're doing even more like what I tend to do is embroidery along the edges of edge stitching that extra wide trough there will allow you to put that kind of fabric and get good feeding so it's important to understand the difference and why you might sometimes have trouble with your feet because you may just need to have all three of them. Now sometimes these are available in plastic for this type of foot and that is absolutely fine. They work very well as well. Um, I have a few machines like my Neki which have the, the embroidery foot with the very wide troughs in plastic and, and they're okay of course. You know, they're more subject to breaking, but you know, plastic can, if you're careful, last a very long time. Don't get oil on it and stuff. So I'm going to show you a challenge here. One moment. So I am going to be stitching this lace, or this embroidered edge, onto my next project. And the finished result, as you've seen from my earlier project, looks like that. Okay. So what I do is I stitch right along the scallop there to hold it down tight. And I stitch it from the inside because it's easier. So when I did that originally I used a straight stitch foot and that would be fine. However, just for fun, I am going to use one of these. Can you guess which one? Actually I'm most inclined to use that one. Just because if you look here, when you get to some of the scallops, they're quite wide. So even though I'm going around the edge of them because I'm twisting and turning, to me I think this will give the best result. I'm going to do that. So this is going to be a really tight squeeze to get in here for the camera. However, it is feeding very well with the foot as predicted. I've had to move the lights out of the way so I can barely see, but it's showing up okay on the camera. Let's see if I can just slightly, yeah, that my hands can, well, do have to just maybe try it from behind. Yeah, that's a happy win. So, off we go. So you can see I've used the widest foot and I can sew over that without any problem. Now, I could potentially have tried the one with the narrower channel, but as you can see, it's feeding perfectly. I don't have to have it, the, th the foot pressure isn't massive. It doesn't need to be when you've got the right channel going on here. Oops. It's 
that due to the image? Yeah, we're okay. Let's just... You can see it's feeding perfectly. I can move the foot around without any problem. flat Tripods in the way of the uh, my sewing door, so I can't get my stiletto out. But dull pointed scissors work in a pinch. Sharp pointed scissors would work too. You just have to be careful not to uh, poke holes in your fabric. And of course, as usual, I put my pin cushion where I was preparing the package and forgot to bring it next to the machine for the video demonstration. Pin. I still have the um, reducer on for doing embroidery at the moment, so I've got the uh, servo motor set to 2900 RPM, which just gets this machine up to a good speed for sewing. Comfortable, not fast. I was half tempted to replace reducers, but I'm not finished with the embroidery, so there's kind of no point in that at the moment. Just skid backwards to get my aim slightly better. And then we'll get in here. So you can see it's a tight squeeze, but doable. Okay. One thing I do like um, with this setup at the moment, it might be on the slowest setting, but it's really easy to say. I want the needle down in the fabric, or I want the needle up in the fabric. I just do it with my feet. I don't have to. Yes, this ser servo motor also has um, needle position um, sensor, but it's difficult. I haven't figured out the best solution to get it to fit on all of my machines yet. So that's a work in progress. But with this setup, it's actually not entirely necessary because I can just kick the servo motor and it automatically will go in the right place. So here's a really good example of sewing over super thick. I'm on the seam, I've also got super embroidery. Um, I even have to use my hyper extension on this machine to just get over that and it's still feeding perfectly. So that's, that's the advantage of this foot. Let's pull up the uh, pin now. The reason for the pins is I don't want the under layer to shift and suddenly get a bunch up of the front side. Because you're sewing through two different things that don't match each other. I wanted to make sure in this case there's no slippage. And that's really important to the finished project. So this does work well with a straight stitch foot as well, but actually I must admit this is feeding more easily than with a straight stitch foot. There's more feed, <coughs> more feed dogs involved rather than just one side. Okay, almost at the end. See, it's quite easy to pivot as well because of the design of the foot, which is really important when you're doing complicated stuff.
I pull out the pin. Almost at the end. See the threads from the star to the project, and as you can see, no puckers or anything else from what I can see. This reverse. And out we go. All done. So I'll turn it right side out. Oops, still attach the bottom thread. A little trim of the threads here. And front threads. And push it right sides out. And done. Perfect results. In fact, that's my embroidery, which as I said wasn't as good as the other stuff, but the package is finished. And then I'll just put some... This'll, this pink will disappear, but it's perfect. So, it worked! Hooray!